Previously, you looked at the basics of how projectile motion works. It's basically two velocities, a vertical component and a horizontal component that can be added together to get the actual, you know, velocity. You can see here in pink color, that is where the ball is moving at any point in time. We also looked at how to treat each component separately. Horizontal is horizontal, vertical is vertical. And you can link them together by this uh, Pythagoras theorem down here, or link together by an angle which you throw the object at. But um, just remember in mind, okay, you must use your Stuva equation, whatever that is, S-T-U-V-A, separately. When you write equation list, or rather like the, you know, the list that we always do, like Miss Lee has shown you many times, S-T-U-V-A, if this one is Y direction, you list everything as Y. Okay. Then if everything is in X component, then you S T U V A, but X, 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 X. The only thing that is the same for both are that doesn't need component is time. T Y and T X I R is the same time. So I'm gonna write a note here. T X equals to T Y. Equals to whatever time last 0.5 second, then 0.5 second to travel from one side to the other. Okay, but I need to also tell you one note. Kind of a look ahead as well. You see this shape of the projectile path? The parabolic shape that we looked at for the, from the previous video? Don't get too attached to it because if you have air resistance, oh, then your path will be a little bit out of shape. Like this picture, oh, normally we assume no air resistance, you have this nice perfect path. When you have air resistance involved, you get this weird purple color curve path. It's not symmetrical. Ah. Asymmetrical. And acceleration here is not constant anymore. So if you say, Miss, can we use Stuva equation? Cannot. Because acceleration is not constant. Uh, we will not deal with the math part of air resistance for Stuva equations because we cannot. But you will learn more about air resistance in a later chapter, the one after this, actually. But here's some facts that you need to know. Number one, you know the shape looks roughly like that, out of shape. Go, 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 there's a need, eh? Drop down. Maybe you see this before when you're playing badminton on a windy day. So here's two facts. When air resistance is negligible, you have a symmetrical quadratic. You see here, wow, curve up, curve down. Okay. And the more important thing is there's no change in horizontal velocity. The beginning here got horizontal velocity, uh, ux. It's the same as over at this point got horizontal vx. Same. Same value, no change. Because horizontal acceleration is zero, not constant. And the vertical velocity is like object in free fall because vertical acceleration is always fixed 9.81 downwards. But when you have air resistance in, uh, involved, we say not negligible, you have non-symmetrical, as we mentioned. Number two, your horizontal velocity, oh, maybe you start off with, I'm going to give you a good value of five meter per second horizontal. After a while, oh, maybe you drop down to three only. Oh, so that means uh, your horizontal acceleration is not zero anymore. We cannot use Stuva. And so you will not go as far. You see this one? Green color goes so far. Purple color, eh, only go until here, then stop ready. So your range is smaller. And lastly, uh, when you're talking about height, it won't go as high. You see how high the purple one goes compared to green? Not as high. And also it will take a shorter time to reach max height. Because oh, very quickly you reach zero already. Imagine this. An object, go up. How high can you go? It depends on how long you take to reach V0. You start out with the initial speed, right? Then you come back down. But if you drop to zero very fast, then very short time, no? Got resistance, ma. So these are the facts we need to know. No, no calculation here yet. Just know this as facts when there's air resistance versus no air resistance. But anyway, assuming we are only sticking to the, the negligible air resistance case, today the main challenge is to actually draw the graphs for all these vectors over here. So we will need to graph acceleration, velocity, and displacement. If you're wondering why there's two columns, it's because we have to graph them separately. You have the vertical acceleration and horizontal, so we can call them AY, AX, VY, VX. Some books use vertical and horizontal. Vertical displacement, horizontal. Okay, I'm going to go show you a very quick demo to help you stare very carefully at this projectile motion again. So this is me throwing a ball, a basketball, and we go whoop, point. Okay, and we stop there. So that path is the projectile path. Based on whatever facts you know or you can remember from your kinematic skills, just remember the power projectile goes like that and then down. 
something like that lah, okay, general projectile path. Remember, we have two components. So I would suggest you pause the video at this point and try to think of how would you draw the acceleration, velocity and displacement graph for horizontal and vertical component. Now I'm going to start off by defining the direction because, you know, this is a vector. So the, the directions are quite important to choose. I'll stick with normal convention. Anything that goes up is positive. Acceleration, velocity, displacement, everything. Everything that goes to the right in that direction, I'm going to call positive in the horizontal. Uh, and the, uh, uh, upwards is going to be the vertical. So that's my key. I'm going to write in the corner to remind myself. Okay, let's do acceleration first. Assuming there is no air resistance, acceleration is due to a force. Due to force acting on the ball, right? It, no, no air resistance. The only force is gravitational force. And that will give you an acceleration of... Since we're looking downwards, right? Okay, who pulled the ball down? Ah? Oh, this ball, right? Planet Earth pulled it down. Gravitational force. That's going to give you acceleration. Nine, negative 9.81. So I'm going to draw a negative line like that. Why you draw so long? I just draw like that, now, okay? So the negative G, 9.81. But wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to the video. Say, miss, the ball just go like that only. Ah. We point. Doesn't it go point, 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 point in the video? Uh, it does. If you want to include the whole thing, sure, we add the rebound part. And that would be really similar, actually, to the before part that we looked at. A rebound of a ball, but this time, instead of just up and down, it's actually running away to the right. Don't worry about that. We are only thinking about the vertical. So like the rebound graph that we saw earlier, you could draw some spikes. I mean, this is if you want to include the rebound. Okay, so the spikes there. Second time, you want to say, you want energy loss? Ah? Okay, la, we include energy loss. So you, uh, after that, it becomes a little smaller. These spikes is when you collide with the floor. This is due to rebound. Okay, la, two times enough already. How about acceleration in the horizontal? If no air resistance, acceleration may don't have. La. So you just zero all the way. So just give a nice zero line all the way. No acceleration. Horizontally. Let's move on to velocity then. So in case you don't remember the, how the velocity looks like, here's another simulation. Now you look carefully, uh, the beginning, you see this horizontal 35.36. Let's see if it changes as we move. No, more, still 35.36. Still 35.36. Look at this thing here. No change. Something is just steadily traveling to the right. But then the vertical. Let's look at the vertical. 35.36. It gets smaller and smaller. Then at some point, you reach zero. There is no more vertical velocity. Now, can I get the zero? Ah, yes. You see? Where's the vertical arrow? No more already. Then it starts to go down. That's when the downwards vertical velocity appears. So if you just look at the red color part, which is the vertical, it's actually like free fall like that. Like you throw a ball up and it comes right back down. If you only look at the vertical. Now the horizontal velocity is just steady throughout the whole thing. So we can just draw, I mean, to the right, right? We assume to the right is positive by definition of our system now. So I'm just going to draw steady. I need, I need more space. Steady to the right. All the way, and this is dependent on the initial horizontal velocity, so u of x. Oftentimes, you will get u of x in terms of u will be u cos theta from resolving vectors. It's just steady, la, constant. This is constant if there is no air resistance. How about the vertical? Okay, it looks like free fall, so we're going to draw a free fall graph. And it's bouncing. So it will be a straight line. Because in the first place, when you throw the ball up, it's moving up. Up is positive. So you have a positive value here, which is going to be the u, y, a positive value. But as the ball goes up, it's getting slower, like rebound. So eventually, you will hit a point where your velocity is zero. This is going to be the highest point. No vertical velocities. L, V, Y, A, 0. And then the ball's like, okay, somebody is pulling me down. So it starts to go down. Down is negative. That's why we go to the negative part of the graph. So here's positive, here's negative. And until you hit the floor, lo, you go faster, faster, boom, suddenly you hit the floor. When you hit the floor, that is where we have the dotted line and suddenly a spike in acceleration. Wow, suddenly 
you're moving very fast, but now you're going upwards. So you have to draw another line with exactly the same gradient because gradient is acceleration. The gradient is dv dt, which is acceleration, which is 9.81 negative. So both of these lines are going to have the same gradient. Remember the rebound that we looked at earlier? And then, I have no need to write already. Like, okay, like here, so this part is a positive velocity while it's going up. Slow down, reach highest point. Okay, highest point. Where Vy is zero, and then it's hard to come down. Come down is negative. If you find this hard to brain, pause the video, think about it, go think back of your your your, your rebound graph, how to draw, okay? But anyway, it's the same. You just keep drawing this, this triangle dotted line. I guess we have to draw triangle. If we zoom in a little bit, we'll find that it's not exactly vertical because there's some collision time. But as you keep bouncing and bouncing, your velocity get lower and lower. Lo. You see our graph here the second time, start lower already. Not so high velocity anymore. Okay, so that's our velocities. Literally just like free fall vertical motion. The last one, displacement. Okay, we think of displacement uh, horizontal first. Horizontal easier. The ball is just traveling to the right at a constant speed, right? You see this velocity up here? Constant, right? That means, hmm, think about your equation S equals to UT plus half AT squared, for example. This is horizontal. If there is no acceleration, then it's just S equals to UT. So what kind of graph is that? S against T is a linear graph. So we're going to draw a line where the gradient, which is the velocity, gradient is ds dt, which is velocity, which is constant. So it is as if you have a ball that starts off here and just move to the right with the constant velocity ux. All the way, steady, just get further and further away. So nice, right? How about the vertical displacement on the left? Imagine the ball, Go up, down, up, down, up, down, bounce, 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 bounce. Oh, this one is going to look like your quadratics already. So we're going to start by drawing the first bounce. Where I'm going to assume the floor is zero displacement. Huh? We go from the floor up. Okay, so floor B. You can come down. Okay, like kind of a bit out of shape, but you get the idea. First bounce. You will go up to a maximum height from where you started. Let's call this a H. H. Remember, we derive equations for that. Okay, that's the first time. You come up, you come down. Then you hit the floor, boing. Then what to do? You bounce again. So you go boing. <laughs> you want to be out of shape. There, that looks nicer. Okay, and you can keep going. Lah. Boing. Up to you. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's fine. We'll, we'll stick to two. And then second time, you will go to a smaller height. You won't go as high anymore. All right, and also reminder, reminder, you want to look at the gradient of this thing. What's the gradient? Gradient at this point, the highest point is zero. See, this graph is flat. So that means the gradient, which is velocity, is zero. Uh, vertical velocity. And you check up there, correct or not? Uh? Yes, at the highest point, there is no vertical velocity. So that's how this graph can look like. Now, don't get too attached to this shape of this graph. Ah. Depending on your system size, it may look like this down there if it's shifted by a certain displacement. Or it could, if your system is defining your positive and negative differently, maybe the graph is upside down like this. Oh, it really depends on. But the main thing you need to know is this, this whole equation is pretty much saying like, oh, if you have a ball, you throw it vertically upwards, it goes up and it comes down. It's based on the equation S equals to UT plus half at square, but in the vertical. So put a y, put a y, and put a y. So if I define my system in this way, up positive, down negative, oh, then I will have sy equals to some initial ut minus half gt square. So this negative is an upside down quadratic graph, which is this shape. Oh. So that's where we get these shapes of graphs from. To wrap up this video, I'm going to add one more graph as a preview uh, because we will also learn about energy in the later chapter. But having a look at all these things, uh, acceleration, velocity, and displacement, 
how would the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy of the object look like? We're going to try to put both of them on the same axis. So this is a graph of energy against, let's say, time. So the first one is gravitational potential energy. You start from ground, you go up, maximum, you come down. So that one is based on the displacement, right? This graph here. Okay, let's say we don't look at the bounds. Lah. We look at one, one time here. So you go up, maximum, come down. It's going to be the same because gravitational potential energy, as we will learn later, is mgh. Depends on height. And your height here, you can basically sub in s of y, which is a quadratic curve. So the graph will look like this. Pretend it's in shape, lah, okay? <laughs> this is the upside down quadratic. The highest point is here, mgh. Okay, so if you're higher, you have more energy. What about kinetic energy? Kinetic energy depends on how fast you are moving. But which component are we looking at, miss? If you look at the velocity graph, we have on one hand, just a steady horizontal. And on the other hand, the vertical is like changing, increase, decrease, increase, decrease. What we want to plot here for kinetic energy is the, what we call the actual speed of the object. So kinetic energy, Ke, is half mv square. And this v square here is going to be including both the horizontal and the vertical. If you forgot the, how they relate already, okay, I write for you. Uh. Velocity, the speed, you know, the actual speed, speed without component, component is square root of vx square plus vy square. Or if you know the angle, you can do the theta, theta. Because that is because if you have a velocity, it can be broken it down into horizontal and vertical. And all these form a right angle triangle. Lah. So that's where we get this thing from. So I don't care. So does the, pro does the projectile actually stop moving with zero velocity? The speed, ah, the, the total speed. Does it? Look carefully. So in this time, I'm going to take away this uh, velocity arrow, the vertical horizontal, so we can focus just on the V. And pay close attention to this 28.28 uh, .28 down here next to my head. As we move... Does it ever reach zero? Ah? Miss near the top got zero. Ah. No war. The smallest you go is 20. It never reaches zero. It's always having a minimum value because of the components. The Vy will disappear at the top. Yes, correct. But there's always the Vx. So the Vx is the smallest that the speed can go. Mm. So I'm going to say I start off with a certain initial energy. Half m u square and the u is both horizontal and vertical add together and now i'm going to decrease but never reach zero okay so it looks something like this look the shape note this part i'm going to draw a dotted line here this is at the highest point highest point and the fact is we never go down to zero ke because there always be a minimum ke due to the horizontal velocity, which is ux, or which is the same as vx. I ah, same thing, lah, it's constant one. So you'll always be moving one. Cannot stop moving. Stop moving means like that. Suddenly the thing fly, 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 suddenly, eh, stop moving. Lah. Huh? Hello? No such thing, okay? And this is how we can draw the energy graph against time. And once again, reminder, this is without air resistance, no air resistance, no energy loss. Your total energy should always be the same. This level will be total energy. So both graph, okay, like if you draw the graph accurately to scale, or both of these graph add together should always give the total energy value at each point. So here and here, oh, hey, total energy up there, man. No, la. Correct, man. Yes, la, correct, la. You slowly go and add, okay. So at some point, uh, the lowest point, Projectile only got kinetic, which is the green. Oh, I didn't label my graph. Mass label. Okay, this is Ke. And the other purple one is going to be GPE. Ah, yeah, my colors are not working any. Never mind. This is Ke. This is GPE. We will learn more about this in a later chapter called Work, Energy, and Power. So this is just a heads up in case you see these questions in your MCQ list for kinematics. 
And I think that's it. Just remember, number one, define your directions when you're drawing graphs. Know the acceleration for horizontal, vertical, velocity, as well as displacement. And of course, know that there are things like energy, kinetic and gravitational potential energy. They are interchanging and there are cases where air resistance is not negligible and you need to remember that the path is a bit different and there are some small facts that affect your values. But we will not do calculations for those. Okay, so that's all for this video. Go try out some of the examples where you will practice your understanding of graphs and statements. But well, that's all for this video. See you in the next one.